ever feel like those training request forms just like disappear into thin air? Or maybe you're the one wading through them thinking, are we really focusing on the right stuff here? Well, get ready to rethink how you approach training decisions, because that's exactly what we're diving into today. Ooh, yeah, sounds familiar. We've got this really insightful article by performance improvement consultant Guy W. Wallace. He's got some strong opinions, let me tell you, especially about how HR handles or maybe overhandles the training budget. Yeah, he doesn't hold back, does he? It's like he's saying if training's supposed to boost the bottom line, shouldn't the folks closest to the bottom line have the final say? It really makes you wonder how many times those training decisions are made based on, you know, who's got the loudest voice instead of what actually matters strategically. It happens all the time, sadly. And that's where Wallace's whole point about not all learning needs being equal comes in. He uses this analogy. You've probably heard of the whole cash cow thing in the business world, right? Well, he applies it to training in a way that really makes you think. Yeah, he talks about cash cows, rising stars, and dogs, <laughs> which I got to say at first sounds more like a weird farm competition than like corporate strategy. But I'm guessing there's no actual livestock involved. No, no, definitely not talking about actual animals here. Okay, so picture this. Your cash cows are those departments or projects that are already cruising along, delivering consistent value. They still need development, obviously, but they're not necessarily where you throw all your training resources. So not about ignoring them, but maybe being a bit more strategic about where those resources end up. Exactly. Now, the rising stars, that's where things get interesting. These are the areas with huge growth potential, like a brand new product line yeah. or a team that's really starting to kill it. They might need a bigger investment up front, but the payoff could be enormous. Kind of like those venture capitalists taking a chance on a startup, right? <laughs> Higher risk, but potentially a massive reward later on. You got it. And then, of course, there are the dogs. I know, I know. Sounds kind of brutal. Yeah, not exactly the label you want. No, definitely not. But think of it this way. Those areas that might be using resources without a clear path to major growth. It's not about giving up on them entirely, but more about asking, could these resources be used better somewhere else to make a bigger overall impact? He seems really focused on this data-driven approach, especially when it comes to ROI. He even mentions factoring in the life cycle costs of a training need, which honestly sounds a bit intimidating. It can be, but it doesn't have to be super complicated. What he's really getting at is a change in how we think. Instead of just saying, hey, we need training on this thing, you start asking, what will this training actually let us do that we can't do now? And how much is that worth to us in the long run? So tying it directly to those business outcomes, not just we want happy employees, but more like, will this training lead to more productivity, happier customers, you know, something we can actually measure. Exactly. And that's when you can start putting numbers to those benefits, even if it's an estimate at first. How much more revenue could we bring in? How much could we save by cutting down on mistakes or being more efficient? I see what you mean. It's like building a solid business case for training, just like you would for any other investment. Exactly. And that's where Wallace's whole good stewardship idea comes in. Good stewardship. It's not exactly the phrase that pops to mind when you're talking about like training programs. <laughs> it yeah. feels kind of formal. Yeah, you're right. Kind of like we should be wearing suits to this meeting. <laughs> but, you know, when you really think about it, it totally applies to how we handle training resources. Wallace boils it down to this. Making sure we're using every training dollar wisely and effectively. And that just makes sense no matter what we're talking about, business expenses, training, even your personal budget, right? Absolutely. So how does this good stewardship actually work in the world of like corporate training? He focuses on three main things. Uh, first, making sure you can share the content easily. Then there's making sure the training feels, I don't know, authentic, I guess, to the people actually taking it. And of course, that constant focus on ROI. Remember that? Right, right. The ROI. Okay, I got to ask about this whole authenticity thing. Does he, like, give any examples? What does that even look like in the real world? It's a bit vague, especially compared to, like, measuring the ROI on a sales training, right? He does, and it's actually pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. so basically, he's saying training shouldn't be this weird, disconnected thing. It's got to be relevant to what people actually do every day, not just some generic program that checks a box but doesn't actually help them on the job. So instead of that one-size-fits-all approach, it's about like tailoring the experience, making it fit the company's needs, maybe even individual teams. Exactly. Think about it. Using realistic scenarios, simulations, even case studies from inside the company itself. The more you can connect the training to their everyday reality, the more likely it is to stick 
and, you know, actually change how they work. Makes total sense. And that probably connects to that content shareability idea too, right? It's not just about saving money by reusing stuff, but about everyone being on the same page. You nailed it. When you've got a system for sharing what works, it's not just about saving money. It's about consistency. Everyone's working from the same playbook, using the same best practices. That's how you build a culture of shared knowledge, which can be incredibly powerful. Wallace also seems pretty passionate about getting more structured overall, moving away from those gut feeling decisions about training and towards like a real system for making those calls. What are your thoughts on that? I think it's crucial, especially as companies get bigger. When you've got all these different departments, each with their own priorities and budgets, all competing for those training resources, you got to have a clear process for deciding what makes the most sense. Otherwise, it can just turn into total chaos. He's really adamant that the system shouldn't just be an HR thing, though. He says you need people from across the business involved. That sounds like it could get messy trying to get everyone on board. It can be tricky, for sure. Getting everyone to buy in is huge, but it's a balancing act. Everyone needs to feel heard like their perspective matters. And that decision-making process has to be fair and objective. Yeah. Otherwise, forget it. So what does a successful training governance system even look like in the real world? Are we talking about committees, frameworks, flowcharts? What? It really depends on the company, how big it is, how it's structured. But there are some common threads. You might have a dedicated committee with people from different departments, a clear set of criteria for evaluating training requests, maybe even a standardized template for analyzing ROI. The key is to build a system that's objective, transparent, and most importantly, aligned with the company's overall strategy. Which brings us back to his point about not just listening to whoever screams the loudest, right? You might have some cash cows demanding their share, rising stars needing a boost, but you can't lose sight of the big picture, the company's long-term vision. Precisely. And a well-designed system can help you find that balance, making sure you're not just reacting to the loudest voice in the room, but actively investing in the areas that will really move the needle for the organization, both now and in the future. It's funny, when you think about it, Wallace is a consultant himself, right? Mm -hmm. Like his whole business is helping companies figure out this training stuff. Makes you wonder, does that influence his perspective at all? Mm, that's an interesting point. Is he like subtly trying to drum up business with this whole article? You know, I don't really think so. Mm. And here's why. He's upfront about his background. He's basically saying, I've seen what works and I've seen what doesn't, and I'm sharing that. It's not so much about selling his services as it is about like advocating for a smarter approach overall a lot of companies struggle with this stuff yeah it makes you realize maybe we've been thinking about training the wrong way for a long time like it's always been an afterthought or something it's possible for years training was just this separate thing often stuck in hr you know but what wallace is talking about is making it part of the company's dna baking it into the strategy from the beginning so for those listening who are ready to actually use these ideas, maybe even start building that more strategic approach in their own companies, what's the one thing you hope they take away from all this? Honestly, mm. the biggest change is just seeing training differently. Instead of thinking of it as a cost, something you have to do, what if we looked at it like an investment, like any investment? You'd want to know what you're going to get out of it, right? Yeah. So instead of just can we afford this training? It's more like, can we afford not to do this? Exactly. Because the real cost isn't always that price tag on the program, right? Yeah. It's the missed opportunities when you don't have the right people with the right skills at the right time. That's a great way to put it. So like when we see those training requests, whether they're ours or from other teams, maybe the first question is, what are we actually trying to achieve here? And don't be afraid to push back a little. Ask for proof look at the data, really dig into how that training is going to translate into real, tangible results for the business. It's not about just saying no to everything, but being smart about where you say yes. Exactly. Make those decisions strategically so you're getting the most bang for your buck. Not just for now, but for the long haul, yeah. you know, for the company's success down the line. This has been a great conversation, really insightful. Wallace's article definitely gave us a lot to think about. Hopefully our listeners are feeling ready to tackle those training decisions with a fresh perspective and maybe even bring a little bit of that good stewardship into the process. Absolutely. And hey, don't forget those rising stars. They're out there. We just got to find them and give them what they need to really take off. So true. Well, that's it for today's deep dive. Keep learning, keep asking questions, and keep pushing for training that truly makes a difference. Thank you.